how do you write a research question? How do you come up with new project ideas? Sometimes even when you're writing applications, you have to have a vague idea of what kind of project you're gonna be doing, or if you're having just an informal chat with your PI and they want to know what the next direction is for your project. So this is my framework for how I come up with new research ideas and new projects. First thing to do when you're trying to come up with new research ideas is to try and pick a topic. But how do you even find a topic that you're interested in in the first place? This is something that I struggle with because I have a lot of different interests in a lot of different areas. So often narrowing it down and seeing how they all fit together can be really challenging. So what I try and do is I make a giant list. So I get a journal and I literally just list out everything that I'm interested in from past projects to lectures that I've had, that kind of thing. And I try and identify what it is about those topics that I like. Then you can start narrowing it down to specific areas. So instead of even trying to do a literature search at this point, because that will come later, um, I would say definitely just do a broad Google search. So doing a project on, literally just Googling like, I don't know, osteosarcomas in dogs, I don't know, something. Search it for sort of the last five years um, on Google Scholar. And then you can really try and sort of narrow it down, see what research is being done, read some review papers. And then from there, that will really start to sort of find your, help you find your niche and what kind of topic you might be interested in. Another key tip here I would say is definitely make sure you save every single one of your papers. Do not have them all open in a million and one different tabs. I'm very guilty of this, but make sure that you save every single one of your papers because you will need them again. Once you have come up with a topic that you want to research, the next part is reading. So you're going to want to get your laptop out and do a thorough literature review and literature search. So try and use databases like PubMed. I'm going to do another video on how exactly to do a literature search later on. So let me know in the comments if that's something you are interested in. But yeah, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start reading all the recent literature on that area. You can normally get quite a lot of good information from reading a couple of decent recent review papers and then using that to try and spin out ideas from there so they'll usually identify like strengths and weaknesses of the work that's already been done and you can really use that to your advantage to then keep trying to brainstorm your ideas i tend to use my ipad for reading papers i use good notes and what i like to do is i like to import them as pdf files i do pay for the real good notes real good notes the pro version of good notes which gives you unlimited documents and everything i would say that it's worth it i've never been someone who's actually paid for an app before and this is one app that i have paid for and i absolutely love so good notes I'll link to it down below, but definitely it's only, I think it was like $6, uh, a one-off payment. And that was literally it. That's what, like a coffee in Starbucks, maybe two coffees in Starbucks, depending on whether you like a pumpkin spice latte. I'm gonna stop going on about pumpkin spice latte. Um, <laughs> good notes, it's good. I then can highlight it in different colors, color code your articles and really like annotate it. I scribble down a lot of stuff on good notes. And I just feel like for me, it saves paper having to print it all out. Cause I've never been someone who can really like scroll through the laptop, like looking at things. I have to physically use it and write on it which is why like the pen and the iPad really comes in handy. So I would definitely try something like that, making sure you're keeping all of your papers in one place um, and just doing a real thorough literature search. The point of this is to know what we know currently so that we can understand what we don't know. A way I find this easy uh, to visualize Write down the title of a paper in a notebook and then sort of write down between three and five main points from that article. So then I tried to color code them into categories, whether it's sort of background information or advantages, disadvantages relating to disease X or disease Y or treatment X or treatment Y, like whatever, you know, you decide. You might not remember everything that that review written in 2012 said, but once you, you can just flick through and think, okay, so they said this, they said this. It just makes it easier, especially when it comes to sort of brainstorming ideas. So then once you've gone through all the literature and you've sort of got your little color-coded list of all of the papers that you've read. This is my favorite part, is where you come to put it all together. So again, I like to use my iPad and I use GoodNotes and I basically make a giant mind map. So each sort of topic or area within the topic will be a separate little prong on the mind map. And again, I tend to write down all of the key information. I literally word vomit all over this mind map. Okay, so every thought, every consciousness, every question I have, I write down on this mind map. So what initially happens is I'll say start with the center of my title let's call it for example a non sciencey topic like making a cup of tea the title in the middle of the mind map would be like tea and then maybe I'd have a prong of like different types of tea or how to make the tea would be two separate prongs then maybe I've read three different papers on how to make different types of tea so those would come out of those sections and then maybe I have a question about why don't we try making cold tea or why don't we try using this brewer or that brewer or blah 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 you get the idea those would all be questions that come off my mind map um, again 
then I try to then link these back together and really put the puzzle, the jigsaw piece puzzles together by using that same color coding that I implemented before. At this point, when you're kind of letting your stream of consciousness flow, I don't know if anyone's ever tried free writing before. It's a little bit like that, where you just kind of write down anything that comes into your mind relating to this topic. And that really helps get your creative cogs whirring and helps you connect the dots between different areas of research because you've got it in front of you and you're not policing your ideas. No one else is gonna see this. You don't have to be shy. You're not gonna show your PI this. All this is doing is literally helping you understand where you are and come up with some wacky ideas. Once you start tying it together with thoughts from before, it will probably start magically to phrase itself into a research question. But what is the difference between a research question and a hypothesis? I didn't know this for a very, very long time and now I know it, so I'm gonna explain it to you guys. So a research question is kind of what it says on the tin. It is a research question. So it's phrased as a question. So let's say you want to look into risk factors for osteosarcomas in dogs. Like what are the main risk factors for osteosarcomas in dogs? Like that's a research question, you know, it's quite broad. Um, it's not very specific, but it does kind of narrow down your focus just a little bit. So you can start using this mind map to kind of do exactly that and really narrow down your focus. The second point is a hypothesis. And a hypothesis is a lot, lot, lot more specific. So it's normally phrased as a statement and it would be something like is risk factor X more important than risk factor Y in the development of osteosarcomas in rock islands. I don't know, something random, but you can see the structure of our hypothesis is a little bit different. I try to structure it like PICO, so P-I-C-O. So population, intervention, comparison, and outcome. So in that sense, we've got a key population that we're looking at, intervention that we're studying in that population. We're comparing it against a control group, group and then what outcome we're actually measuring. What you can try and add in at the end is a because statement so try and give some kind of way or mechanism that this might be occurring um, not many hypotheses do this um, but apparently it's a good way of trying it so give it a go but those are the sort of main differences between a research question and a hypothesis I would say at this stage when we're just trying to brainstorm ideas and everything having a hypothesis isn't that important I mean it's impressive if you do but for the sake of this we're just sort of using this mind map to generate research questions um, but yeah that's the main difference once you have a research question and or hypothesis um, one of the things I really like to try and do is tie it back to the significance of the work. So what's the point? I feel like a lot of the times we get so focused in on the fundamental science that we forget the actual bigger picture. So if you're trying to convince your PI or convince someone to um, let you in to do a PhD at their institution, you really need to try and identify why it is that this research is important. Maybe you've identified a key gap in the knowledge base, or maybe this will help develop new treatments for some other disease, or maybe it will elucidate a new signaling pathway in immunology. I don't know, but it's probably, the chances are it's probably important to you. So you really need to try and hammer that home. Try and bring it, always link it back to the significant state um, and really use what you learned during your uh, literature review. Try and sort of hammer home the significance of the work. It might be that you've identified sort of more than one research question, which can be quite common, but that's great. Store it in a little bank. Always save all of your work, all of your notebooks. And occasionally like what I tend to do is sometimes even write stuff like on my notes app when I'm thinking about stuff, if I go to seminars and everything, like really make sure you draw on all your knowledge because you never know when something might just hit you. Uh, my current project, I'm working on nanoparticles and you know, I first heard about nanoparticles in a one lecture of one, like one slide of one lecture when I was in second year of veterinary school. So that's a really, really long time ago. And I came back to it, came up with some new ideas and here we are now working on nanoparticles. So like you never know when you might need the ideas that you thought might not be important. So definitely keep a note of everything. Um, and that's where I find the color coding and good notes and stuff really, really, really helpful. So that is how I come up with new ideas for research projects. It's not for everybody and it's definitely not a one size fits all. The most important thing is to come up with a framework that suits you. So even if there's little tips that you can take from this video to use in your project workflow, then that is great. Um, if you have anything to add, like let me know in the comments. I'm always looking to learn. So uh, please let me know how you come up with project ideas. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Please don't forget to like and subscribe um, and I'll see you all next time. Okay, bye.